Hi guys, welcome back. And today in this video, we'll be talking about how you can make use of model context protocol to perform API testing, UI testing, and database testing without writing even a single line of code. Again, if you have never really heard about model context protocol, well, model context protocol is an open standard that enables developers to build a secure two-way connection between the data source and the AI-powered uh, tool. So it's basically aims to bridge the gap between the large language model and the external world so that you can let the large language model to access the data from the database or your file system or accessing the, the browsers like running the playwright test and also running the API test and stuff. So that's what you can use the model context protocols. And I have talked a lot about the model context protocol and in this particular lecture i'm going to show you how you can use the model context protocol tools to perform the api testing ui testing and database testing without writing even a single line of code so for doing that i'm going to use two model context protocol tools this time the one is the most popular uh, playwright mcp server which helps you perform both the ui testing as well as the api testing as you can see over here this particular playwright uh, mcp server has got a lot of different features in every single release and one of the feature we have released recently is the support of the playwright console log as well as the playwright closing the browser instance really and you can see that these are the supporter tools which is available in this particular uh, the ui feature and similarly for the api we have got the get post put patch and delete operation which can really help you perform the API testing over there. So these are the things that you can use with the Playwright MCP server side. And there is another model context protocol that we can really use is the SQLite MCP server, which is the part of the, uh, the model context protocol team itself from the Cloud Anthropic. And this has got quite a lot of different tools like read query, write query, create table, uh, and uh, describe tables and things of that nature. So we're gonna use these two tools to perform this operation with the power of the MCP and we're gonna fuse that with the cursor IDE. So if you really not heard about cursor, I also talked about cursor in my uh, last video. Uh, you can just go to the cursor.com, which is this one. You can see that this uh, this particular editor, which help you uh, to run the MCP toolings natively as well. And you can see that this is an AI code editor, which helps you do all these operations. And I will show you some of the shortcut way that you can use the cursor rules to run everything in just one single command. I will uh, show you everything in this particular video. You will be like mind blown how these things are really happening happening the power of AI. So the application that we are going to be testing this time is going to be this application. I have used this application in many of my Udemy courses, which is available uh, for, uh, for testing as well as for the uh, artificial intelligence. So you can use this particular code to test your application for both AI uh, as well as for the Playwright, Selenium, and Rest Sharp kind of application testing. So this application has got a web UI as well as an API and has got the database, which is a Microsoft uh, SQLite database, really. Uh, so I'm going to run this particular application I will show you how this application looks like. The moment I run this particular application, you're going to have a uh, the UI which is going to show all the different products and there is going to be uh, an API endpoint which is going to perform the uh, list of all the uh, like the API operation for the particular product, you can see all of these things coming up over here. Very straightforward application. You have got the Swagger uh, documentation for the schema of your API. So we're gonna use all this information to fuse it to the AI or feed it to the AI so that the AI can start answering with the power of the, uh, with the agents which is available and it's gonna use the power of the MCP to do this all operation. So I'm gonna go to my, uh, uh, hyper uh, terminal over here and I'm going to open the cursor uh, IDE so make sure that you have installed the cursor IDE if you have not so please make sure you do that because that is what we're going to be using in this particular uh, demonstration so first of all we need to set up the uh, the cursor IDE with uh, two MCP server one is the uh, the playwright MCP server and another one is the uh, database server I've already did both of them so if I just go to the settings and if I go to the cursor setting and if I go to the MCP over here you can see that I have configured the playwright uh, tool over here as well as the SQLite tool over here it's very very straightforward i have talked about this millions of time in my youtube channel so please go and watch this particular video i will put the details in the description below as well so that you can watch there if not you can just see that uh, all you have to do it is just go and hit this add new mcp server and you can just say playwright uh to maybe uh, and in the command over here you just have to put npx hyphen y and then you don't know what exactly you need to put that's the reason why you need to go to the documentation uh, over here uh, and you can see what you should really be configuring so you can use either the symmetry to do that operation you can just copy paste it through a command to do it or you can just use this npx hyphen y and then execute automation slash playwright mcp server 
uh, in the cursor over here and if you hit add you will notice that the playwright 2 is going to be added and it's going to show all the toolings for you over there that's what this is going to happen and similarly if you're going to add the uh, the sql server the sql light uh, tool they have given the documentation over here you're going to be using the uv tool of the python which is basically uh, to uh, to run the python uh, in the command line interface so uh, this is something that i have configured over here so if i just go hit and edit you see that uv run uh, the mcp server sql light this is the same thing that i'm doing over here the mcp sql server light but we need to give the db path and the database that we are going to be querying for our application so the application which i have got is in my download location uh, and this is the database the product uh, db which is exactly going to point to the database that i have got uh, running in my application over here this particular product dot db as you're seeing so that i can query and see if my database is working as expected or my application is saving things or not i'm going to delete the playwright too because that tool is really not required i already have things in place so i'm going to use these two tools to do the api ui and database testing so hope you got the idea right now and i'm going to close this cursor setting and here is our guy here is the place where I'm going to ask all the questions. It's going to run the agent and then it's going to run on the Cloud 3.5 Sonnet as you can see over here. You can use Cloud 3.7 Sonnet as well if you don't if you want. It's going to be just working as expected as well. So over here, I'm going to ask the question. I'm going to say navigate, uh, navigate to the application that we have got is going to be this guy, right? So this particular uh, thing over here uh, and click the create link and i'm gonna say uh, then create the product uh, with some realistic uh, data uh, with name uh, i think it has got what well, i think that we have name description price product type so i'm gonna say name uh, i'm gonna say price and select product uh, type as uh, I think the product type we have got a lot of product types over here I'm gonna say CPU to select really uh, CPU uh, and click the uh, submit button or maybe submit input uh, type uh, create to create the product right so this is what i'm gonna tell really and once we have created the product i also wanted to say that also check get endpoint of api to see if the product is created for the schema definition use the link and i'm going to give the schema definition as well because without schema definition the ai will have no idea how your api is going to be so we need to give that particular schema definition over here but you can link all the schema definition from your current source code as well if you wanted to because this is the source code so you can fetch you can ask the ai agent to go and check in the code to get the schema but i'm not going to do that right now so i'm just going to give this particular schema definition over here uh, and and I'm also going to say uh, check the DB for the user uh, being created. So I'm also selling, telling that, not the user, a product being created. So I'm also going to ask that. Um, finally, close the browser because we just need to close the instance of the browser because it's going to store in the memory and it's going to run the Chromium behind the scene and your, um, your, your cursor needs to be restarted if it is not done. And now I'm just going to run this and we'll see what is really going to happen. And see, the moment I run this particular stuff over here, you will notice that uh, now it's going to first run. Uh, it's saying that I'm going to help you navigate through the product creation, verify the API response, check the DB and hand in the browser session. So we'll do one by one over here. So it's going to first run the tool. So the moment you run the tool, it's going to open uh, the browser and then it's going to navigate there. And it's telling me that now let's click the create link. There we go. So it's going to have, it has already created the, uh, click the create link. And let me fill out the product form with the realistic data. So it's going to fill up the uh, realistic data there. So is it that it's going to enter Intel Core i9 and all those things? Because I told the product category as CPU. So it knows that this is what it has to enter, which is amazing. Uh, and it has to select the drop down with the CPU. Look at that. It is running the Playwright Select tool, which is amazing. 
and then it has to create the product and you notice that the product has been created and look at the price it's zero there because it really doesn't handle the application really doesn't handle uh, the floating point number like decimals and that's the reason why this is uh, just showing me a zero i think now the cloud is going to suggest me that this is going to fail but we'll see what is going to happen and now see that it's going to run the uh, api testing so before it runs the api testing it's first getting the schema so it's understanding the schema as well and then it is going to perform a get operation so it is getting all the products which is great uh, and the response code is uh, 200 and now it is doing a database test which is going to call the the uh, the another tool, the SQLite tool, as you can see, the list table is been invoked, and now now it is calling the read query uh, tool as well because it needs to query the table over there, uh, and then finally it is going to close the browser, and the browser has closed successfully, and now it is giving me its final outcome that what the test has done and how things are performing. It says that I can confirm that the product was successfully created. Let me summarize what we have found. Now it's pretty much like a test engineer is telling me the whole summary of what's really happening. It tells me that the API was, uh, the product was created with the system uh, with IDS5 and that this is the thing that it has returned from the API. So API is returning things correctly. Uh, but the database record matches the API response as well. But there is a small issue. The price is not saved correctly. It shows zero instead of 599.99. As I told you, this uh, this particular application should uh, ideally uh, show me uh, the price as 599.99, but it's showing me zero there, which is a bug, right? Like it is telling me this is what is happening. And it says that the data type conversion uh, might be handled incorrectly, or maybe the database uh, schema constraint. Would you like me to help me investigate this particular problem? So now as a developer, you can go and investigate this problem, or maybe test engineer, you can go ahead and ask uh, this AI agent to say, what will be the best way to resolve this particular problem? So it's gonna go and figure out the particular things and it's gonna resolve that issue for you. That is something that I'm gonna talk about maybe in another video, like how you can resolve things. But I'm gonna also show you how you can uh, automate this entire process using the cursor's rules really. So what I really mean about the rules is that you can just go ahead uh, in the cursor uh, over here uh, and then you can just say create a folder. Oh, you can just create a folder uh, on the outside of this particular location and I'm going to create a folder here. I'm going to call this as cursor uh, and under this particular cursor, I'm going to, or maybe this should be, sorry, this should be dot cursor. So that's the one. And under this particular folder, I'm going to create something called as rules. And within this particular rules, I'm going to create a file and I'm going to name this up like any uh, file name. So I'm going to say uh, test automation. Maybe it's like um, API uh, UI test dot mdc file so basically this is like an md file with a for the cursor over here and the moment i do it you can see that it's going to ask me what is the description of this particular rule that is going to be helpful for so i'm going to say uh, this rule uh, is to test the api uh, ui and db of application uh, application using uh, using tools something like that and over here, I'm going to describe this particular uh, task, uh, which is going to be performed over there. So I can put this entire detail, as you can see over here, or uh, I have just written this thing so that I can just um, save some time to explain you what this is. See, I'm going to say, when I say slash test, then perform the following. So I'm going to just say, if I'm going to put a slash test in the chat, then it is going to go navigate to this particular uh, site and it's going to create a product by clicking the create link and then it's going to enter these details, uh, check the database for the created records and use this schema uh, before it performs the API test and also check uh, the get operations value returns things correctly based on the particular schema. So whatever thing that I have written over here in the command, I can now put all of them like a, like a template so that it can be used as a rule set while it is going to perform the test uh, in the uh, or operation in this particular chat window over here. So I'm gonna save this particular rule. I'm gonna go uh, and I'm gonna see that, see that now that there is a context already here like API UI test, let's, let's remove that. But I'm just gonna say slash uh, and I'm gonna say test. That's it. 
If I just say slash test over here in the chat, then immediately it knows what I'm talking about because there is a rule which is going to tell me, you see that now it says that this is a rule that it needs to perform these many operations. So it is running everything for me one by one. Look at that. It's going to open the browser uh, and then uh, it's going to perform the rest of the operation that we have described before as well. The same thing is going to happen over here. And this rule is going to be very, very handy if you're going to create like multiple rules uh, based on a specific scenarios for you to uh, to run the test. And at the same time, how you're going to handle your uh, uh, toolings. Like maybe in your case, sometimes you may not be requiring the, the database tool. So in that case, you can just use uh, a rule engine very specific for those tools combination but in here because i'm just going to be using for database testing as well as for the api testing i'm just going to use all of them together over here but as you can see over here so this is quite amazing this rules as well as the toolings with the mcp is going to do all these tests for you over here and it's going to tell you what exactly is going wrong if there happens to be any issue this is the power of the Playwright MCP server and how effectively you can use the Playwright MCP server with the power of uh, the cursor IDE, which is going to help you do things even more better. And you can do all of these operations without writing even a single line of code. That's it, guys. Once again, thank you so much for watching this video. And I'm sure these are the most exciting things which is going to make our testing lives more and more easier because this is going to keep things more straightforward, simple, and also achieve the operation that we are looking for. And it makes our testing life so much easier, as I'm telling you. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Catch you in the next video with more powerful AI automation testing. Thank you.